the ongoing mission to save Biscayne Bay. The bay usually gets a break during the cooler winter and spring months before the heat and heavy rains of the summer wreak havoc on this now very fragile watershed. But recently, scientists have discovered an alarming trend that could soon spell trouble for the bay as the efforts to restore it have never been more urgent. <laughs> On a cool March morning, right here. I joined the research team from FIU's Institute of Environment back on the waters of Biscayne Bay. The data coming in from one of the research buoys is alarming. This morning at 5.30, temperature 24, dissolved oxygen was 0 0.8. For the fourth straight day. And that's the same pattern we saw Saturday morning, Sunday morning, Monday morning. Oxygen levels coming from the mouth of the Biscayne Canal into the bay are dangerously low. It's one of the factors that caused the devastating fish kill in the North Bay last summer. Dr. Todd Crowell, who leads the team, is worried. We should not see oxygen get below five, six, giving these temperatures and this amount of mixing. So, so what's causing it? I don't know. The team now on an urgent mission to find the source. The only conclusion is that it's chemical, an overload of dangerous nutrients from land-based pollutants. But from where? We really need to, to figure out where this is coming from and come up with a fix. I mean, ASAP. Since the summer, closely monitoring the bay has been a 24-7 operation. It is CSI on the water. This time we will be proactive and say the oxygen is dropping. We're going to have fish dying if we don't get out there and figure out how to oxygenate, oxygenate the bay. So far, it hasn't come to that. Our bay has been holding steady the past seven months with no major events like the fish kill or algae bloom that we experienced last summer. But June is around the corner. Our temperatures are getting warmer, and so is our water. And the looming threat of another potential fish kill happening this year is a very real concern. If you ask me what keeps me up at night, that keeps me up at night. Irela Baguet is the newly appointed Chief Bay Officer, tapped by Miami-Dade Mayor Daniela Levine Cava to lead the effort to restore the bay. We're on a time crunch because the summer's almost around the corner. Baguet previously chaired the Biscayne Bay Task Force, which in the course of its research had identified abandoned and derelict vessels in the bay, likely spewing fuel and other dangerous chemicals into these fragile waters. A month into her new position, five of those sunken boats were finally removed in a joint effort by Miami-Dade Police, Durham, and FWC. It's a huge problem, and we're one of the worst counties with that problem. People just abandon these things. There's a huge bureaucratic process to remove them. It is just a band-aid to a patient on life support. But for the first time, there is urgency and action. Well, I think all the stars are aligned right now to really move a lot, a lot of things forward. Baguette's next task is the appointment of a watershed management board made up of representatives from state, local, and federal agencies to come up with policy and delegate corrective action to save the bay. The idea was really creating a partnership between the county, the state, and the federal governments because we're all going to have to fund some of these um, big infrastructure improvements together. That has also begun. Our sewer line is on the street right behind us. Miami-Dade Water Sewer recently finished installing two pump stations and a force main along Northwest 7th Avenue near 155th Street in North Miami, which will now allow 150 commercial properties plus a budding residence to connect to new sewer lines, eliminating failing septic tanks that leak thousands of gallons of wastewater into our groundwater that feeds the bay. Well, these two projects represent an investment of over $5 million. The entirety of the program will uh, involve an investment of $126 million. Again, the largest septic to sewer program in the state. Miami-Dade has over 120,000 septic tanks. Well, here it is, it's his Mayor Levine Cava has made the conversion to sewer of those septics most vulnerable to sea level rise a top priority. That feel the momentum, you feel the acceleration, and it's a number one priority for the county. Dangerously low. And for Dr. Crow, this can't happen soon enough. Dangerous nutrients constantly spewing from leaking septic tanks and sewage spills, along with fertilizer and toxic storm drain runoff, and all that marine debris and plastic pollution is killing our bay. We have no options. We have to get infrastructure put into place. Can we save Biscayne Bay? Is there really a choice? We have to save Biscayne Bay. What else do we got? 
going to do? We have so much to lose if we don't. And it's all up to us to make sure that we improve the health of the Bay. Um, Tampa Bay did it. Chesapeake Bay did it. We can do it. We can do it, but make no mistake, all of us who call South Florida home must be part of the solution. The county, the state, the cities are doing the heavy lifting with racing to improve infrastructure, but all of us have to commit to do better with how and what we consume and how we dispose of it. Our littering and plastic pollution are out of control. I'm going to take a deep dive on that issue coming up in another special report airing soon right here on Local 10.